it's Serbi Chinte, and I'm here with SS Multimedia. And today, we're going to be learning how to multiply with three factors. Our objective is to use associative property to multiply three factors. So, I know I underlined basically the whole, whole thing, but it's pretty important. So let's get started. So first up, we have 5 times 4 times 3. So, in case you don't know what the associative property is, basically, if whatever operation you're using is commutative, which means that you can flip it around and the answer will still be the same, then you can use the associative property and basically group them together, kind of like that. We're going to start with that and we're going to do 5 times 4 times 3. So, let me write it out again. We know that we can multiply this all out, or we could use associative property and group whichever two. We can group 5 times 4, we can group 4 times 3, we can group 5 times 3, but don't do them all at once because then it'll look confusing like that did right there. So I'm going to group 5 times 4. 5 times 4 is 20. Then we have 20 times 3. 20 times 3, if I did over here, we can see that is equal to 60. So we know that 5 times 4 times 3 is equal to 60. In case you want to see that this actually works and you can flip it around, what we can do is 5 times 4 times 3 again, and we can show the associative property, but with different numbers. We can do 4 and 3 this time. 4 times 3 is 12, then we have 5 times 12. 12 times 5 is equal to, if we did it right here, we would get 60. So, that's what we got up here too. So that shows that this is the same. Let's move on to our next one now. Next up, we have 9 times 2 times 1. Now we can use associative property for this one too, but since we know that the third factor is 1, we know that whatever you multiply by 1 is equal to itself. So if I were to multiply 9 times 2, which is 18, 18 times 1 is equal to 18 because whatever you multiply by 1 is equal to this itself. So we can still do the associative property with this, it's just there's kind of no point of doing it. So we have 9 times 2 times 1, we can group 2 and 1, 2 times 1 is 2, and we would still have 9 times 2 which is equal to 18 again. So 9 times 2 times 1 is equal to 18. Let's move on to our last example. We have 6 times 7 times 4. So I'm going to write it out again just so it's easier to group. We can group 6 and 4 this time. Because even though they're not right next to each other, we can still group them. 6 times 4 is equal to 24. 24 times 7 is equal to, let's do it right here. 24 times 7 is equal to, 4 times 7 is 8, carry the 2 we get 168. This would be equal to 168. We could group some other ones and we could do 6 and 7. 6 times 7 would be 42. 42 times 4 is also probably going to be 168. So if we did that we have 8 and then 4 times 4 is 16. 168 again. So that shows that the associative property does work. Let's move on to some problems now. First up, we have 7 times 4 times 1. Again, we can use associative property, but since we have 1 right here, we don't really need to. So instead, we just do 7 times 4, which is equal to 28. So this would be equal to 28. Next up, we have 10 times 9 times 3. So we can do this a couple different ways. We can just multiply 10 by 9 or 3 because we know that whenever you multiply a number by 10, you get the number and a 0, 30, 90. But we're going to do that. So we're just going to pick one. I'm going to do 9 times 10. 9 times 10. This is also like grouping them. You can do 9 times 10 is 90. 90 times 3 is equal to 270. If you're wondering how I got that, can do this 90 times 3 which is that's 0 and then we have 227 so 270 or 
you could just do 9 times 3, which is 27, and just add the 0 at the end. So, we know that 10 times 9 times 3 is equal to 270. Alright. Next, we have 5 times 7 times 5. So this time, I'm going to group 5 times 5. Because it's they're the same number, it's easy to multiply. You can also do 5 times 7. It's the same thing. You'll get the same answer at the end. So we have 5 times 5, which is equal to 25. And then we also have 7 right there. You can keep it in parentheses or write it like this, like I did up here. It's the same thing. The parentheses just so, show that you're multiplying. 25 times 7 is equal to, let's do it over here. So 5 times 7 is uh, 35. We carry the 10, which is 3. Then 2 times 7 is 14. 14 plus 3 is 17. So we get 175. If I were to do this the same way, but grouping 5 and 7, I would get 35 times 5 which I assume is the same as 25 times 7. But let's do it anyway just to check. So 35 times 5 is equal to 5 times 5 is 25. It's 5. We carry the 2 right there. Then we get 175, which is what we got up here. All right. As you keep doing this, it'll get easier and easier. But it helps if you know your multiplication facts. All right. So here we have 3 times 7 times 9. So let's group 3 and 7 this time because it seems easier. And we get 21, and then we have 21 times 9. 21 times 9 is equal to, since 1 times 9 is 9, then we have 2 times 9, which is 18, we get 189. If I grouped 9 and 3 or 7 and 9, we would still get the same thing because of the associative property. All right, here's another one. Here we have 2 times 8 times 4. I'm going to group 2 and 4 only because I know that 2 times 4 right here is equal to 8. Then we do 8 times 8 which is equal to 64. It's easier to have single digits multiplied by single digits because then you don't have to do like I did right here. You don't have to write it out like that. If I did 8 and 4, then I would get 32 times 2, which I would have to write out and do like that. Here we have 8 times 10 times 7. We can group 8 and 7 because 8 times 7 is 56. And whenever you multiply by 10, it's basically just 1, which is 56, and you add a 0 at the end. If you did the associative property and did 8 times 10 and 80 times 70, you would still get 560. So here's our next one. We have 9 times 4 times 3. So let's do 9 and 3, which is equal to 27, 27 times 4. So because it's a long number, I'm going to multiply it out right here because it's easier. So 7 times 4, again, is 28. 28, we have to carry the 2 right there. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. 8 plus 2 is equal to 10. So we get 108. So we know that this is equal to 108. If I did 9 times 4, for example, I get 36 times 3, which is also the same if we multiply it out. I could also do 4 times 3, which is 12, and 12 times 9. I could also do 4 times 3, which is 12, and then 12 times 9, which would probably be easier overall. Okay, here we have 9 times 3 times 2. We can do 9 times 3, which is 27, and then multiply that by 2. But I want to stay with single numbers if I have the chance. So I'm going to do 3 times 2, which is 6, and then 6 times 9, which is 54. So now let's do number 9. Number 9 is 4 times 8 times 6. So I'm going to group 4 and 6, then we get 24 times 8. 24 times 8, which I'm going to have to multiply out, is 32, because 4 times 8 is 32, and we carry over the 3, 2 times 8 is 16, 16 plus 3 is 19, so we get 192. You can also group 8 and 6, and we would get 48 times 4, which is 192. You can multiply it out to check, 
then we get 8 times 4 is 32, carry a 3, then we get 16 plus 3, 192. So we get the same answer again. Okay, so here's our last problems. We have 7 times 5 times 4. So we can group any of them again, but I'm going to group 5 and 4, because 5 times 4 is equal to 20. 20 is easier to multiply with 7 than, let's say, 35 and 4, or 28 and 5. Because 20 has a 0 right here, and when you, whenever you have a 0, you just do these two, get 14, then add the 0. If we multiply these out, it would also be 140. That one would also be 140. So now we're going to do some challenge problems. These ones are going to be a little bit harder, but I'm sure you can do them. If you need to pause the video to do them, go ahead. So first step, we have 70 times 2 times 1. We can do the associative property again, and since whenever you multiply by 1, you get the same number, 2 times 1 would be 2, and then we would get 70 times 2. And when you multiply by a multiple of 10, like 70 is, you do 7 times 2, which is 14, adds a 0 at the end. If you want to see the proper way of how to multiply by multiples of 10, feel free to check out our video, Multiplying Multiples of 10. So then we get 140. You could also group 70 and 2, which would be 140, like we showed down here. Multiply that by 1, which would be, which would be 140. So let's do our next challenge problem. This one is 40 times 6 times 3. So I'm going to do 40 times 6 first. 40 times 6 is 240. Again, multiple of 10, so that's easier. And then we do 240 times 3. So this is a three-digit problem, kind of, because 240 has three digits. But it's the same thing as doing 70 times 2 over here. It's just another digit. So 240 times 3 would be 0 times 3 is 0. And then we could do 4 times 3, which is 12. So it's 2 right there. Then we would carry the 10. And then we would get 2 times 3, which is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So we would get 720. If we did 40 times 3, these two, then we would get 120 times 6, which is also equal to 720. So this is our last challenge problem. We have 50 times 9 times 3. If we did 9 times 3, we would get 50 times 27, which we don't want to get yet because it's a little bit too advanced. So instead, we're going to do 50 times 3, and that gives us 150 times 9. 150 times 9, we can do over here like we did the last one. Right here, we can do 9 times 0 is 0, 5 times 9 is 45, so we would write the 5 down. We would carry the 4 up here, and we would get 9 times 1, which is 9, plus 4, which is 13. So we would overall get 1,350. So to double check this, we can do 50 times 9, which is 450. Then we would do 450 times 3. We would multiply it out like this, and we could get 0 because 0 times 3 is 0, 5 times 3 is 15, but we would carry the 1 up here. And then 4 times 3 is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13. Again, we would get 1,350 like we did right here. So finally, we're going to do a word problem that has lollipops. So I have 9 lollipops. I'm going to underline the important things because we're going to use them later in the problem. My friend has seven times the amount of lollipops I have. So if I have nine of these, nine of these lollipops right here, my friend has seven times the amount of nine lollipops I have. So now my friend's sister has two times the amount of lollipops my friend has. So that means if I have nine of these, my friend has seven times the amount of nine. Then. My friend's sister has two times the amount of seven and nine. How many lollipops does my friend's sister have? Not my friend, but my friend's sister. So this is how we're going to do this. 
We know that I have nine lollipops. We also know that my friend has seven times the amount of lollipops I have. My amount is nine, so we would be multiplying by seven. Next, we know that my friend's sister has two times the amount of lollipops my friend has. So if my friend has these two combined, we know that my friend's sister has that many lollipops. So we multiply by two. So now we're gonna use the associative property again, and we're gonna multiply this out. So I'm gonna do two times seven, and group them together like that, so we get 14 times nine. Now I'm gonna multiply this out, and we would get 14 times nine. Four times nine is 36, carry the three. Nine times one is nine, nine plus tw uh, three is 12. Then we would find out that my friend's sister has 100, 26 lollipops. Again, if you're not sure about this, you can always double check by grouping two different ones, like nine and two. So then we would have 18, because nine times two is 18, times seven. Eight times seven is 56, so we put the six there, carry the five. Seven times one is seven. Seven plus five is 12. So again, we got 126 lollipops. That's a lot of lollipops. But anyways, we figured out how to do this and how to double check them. Thank you and bye.